Good. You help out shipping sometimes. I need you to come join us. We got a few more people. Yeah. You want to join us? Where are you going to get All right. All right. We're gonna go do it. You wanna you wanna head out there with with you guys? You can jump oh. with me on the coaching side of it. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. You'll like it because it's not gonna be direct. You're gonna love this how I do this. Okay, let's go surprise them. Okay. It's not outside of our scope to be the I hope you got that. Yep. All right, guys. Howdy. How you guys doing this morning? Great. Oh, come, come, come around, gather around. We got a little discussion. We got uh, this little, a new series, Workplace Wellness, all right? So we're sharing, well, Derek, you're schooled up on this stuff, so you're going you, to... You're going to work? You, you, no, 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 you're going to be my demo man. <laughs> so, nice. first thing, we got, I'll just say this, so this way, winter is coming, all right? <laughs> winter is coming. Look at these racks. See all these barbells all around? Freaking look at this. Masses about all through here. Okay, we've just got, we went in and spent a bunch of time working with our plating vendors, developed some new processes and fixtures for them. Uh, that's been our holdup. And we're gonna be packaging a shit ton of stuff and heading out of here. And we also have some other large products that I'm gonna talk about for the camera that are gonna be hitting soon. And it's gonna come down to, I guess you're gonna be working your ass off, lifting stuff. And I want you to know something really important here. All right. The nonsense that you've heard through the years about lift with your legs, not your back, is just that. They're hurting people by preaching this nonsense, okay? What we need to be able to do is learn how to buffer our spine and manage spinal position. If we lift with our legs, that actually puts us in very poor mechanical position. It's a combination of everything working together, but trying to, to lift a box like this is not necessarily the good thing, and not learning how to manage and control this is going to end up leading to injury. So we want to be able to do that. So today, we're gonna to talk about a couple of things. One of them is some basic bracing fundamentals, and the second piece is a hip hinge. And that's how we work all this mechanics together. And this is how we actually lift safely. This is how we live better in life, better and safely, okay? And Derek, I know you're, you, you've seen the results of this as you've uh, joined oh, yeah. uh, and worked in the gym. Bo, you've been with us for, for a long time. Um, we've, I, 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 I added a, I asked an extra guest to attend us, uh, our new engineer, Victor, uh, to, uh, to join with us as, today to kind of walk through some of these concepts because they're really important if we're going to go and be packaging how many hundreds of barbells around here, right? So the first one is bracing. So I'm not going to talk a whole bunch and dive into the, the breathing mechanics stuff, but <clears throat> Just basic bracing, all right? So I want you to put your thumbs right here in your obliques and just push them in, all right? And then what we're gonna do here is fill our belly. So you're gonna imagine just filling it like a balloon and pushing those away and filling outwards, not flexing, okay? We're creating this expansion. You can actually put your finger right down here, right below your belt line too. This is the second point. These two areas, boom, and really feel those push away. A lot of people think this is belly breathing and wanna focus on this from like a belly yoga breathing. Wrong, okay? It's 360 degree expansion all the way around. This creates an eccentric loading of that entire, th it's our thoracolumbar musculature around the back, the abdominal sheath, all this tissue. And it's all gonna react against that. So just cueing this one thing causes a lot of this to happen, all right? We also, as we do it, wanna make sure that we're in good position here. So imagine this rib cage, this front sternum, the back here, and we want that aligned with the pelvis right here. So I asked Brady to join me in case he wanted to join anything here. Mm -hmm. But in, in here, we're not gonna end up in some of these positions, maybe like we would in weightlifting. So I'm not gonna over cue it, but it's, into this position here, boom. So just real quick, arch back, and then try that same inflation. Can you feel how it's significantly less? Yeah, yeah, it makes a huge difference, okay? We have to have those aligned. And what that does is there's a di your diaphragm that causes your breathing. It descends down, all right? But that's one of, its, one of its functions. It has two other functions. The second one is stabilization. 
That's what's actually creating this distinct load. And then it causes a co-contraction on this pelvic floor, all right? Just gonna leave it at that, not going through too much science here, all right? All you gotta do is think about this right here and have these two align, not be crunching over, not be arching like this. That's it, it's really simple. And then we wanna manage this for the amount of load that we have, okay? You're lifting something up, you're moving around to a station. If you're so locked down and tight, you're gonna run into some problems doing this and that's gonna create some other issues, okay? So balance it for the amount of load. So now the next is, we gotta combine this. This is how we use our back. Now we've buffered our spinal position. We've learned how to stabilize this under load, okay? This is huge, it's gonna affect everybody's life. This is, I repeat this metric over and over and over again. Number one healthcare cost in America. Back pain. It's not, not heart disease, it's not cancer, it's not diabetes, it's not those big things. It's something that we're learning to manage right now. This isn't just on your job. This is all parts of your life. And I know some of you are young, you haven't experienced this yet, so you're, you're like, ah, oh, nodding your head. When it happens to you sometime in your life, like, you've been there, I know it, right? It's devastating. Physically, mentally, to your life, it's huge. All right? Hip hinge, it's really simple. This baby's on wheels. I'm gonna stand in front of it. I'm gonna buffer my spine. I'm gonna push that into the rack. If I do this, it doesn't happen. If I do this, it doesn't happen. If I do this, it happens. That's a hip hinge, okay? This, whoop, is how we get in good position to lift things. Nice, good position with our spine. We're activating and we're gonna cue these big powerful muscles to do the lifting. Not this, okay? That's all gonna come into play as well. This actually works all of this tissue, everything through the whole body together. Okay? Okay. Give me a strike. Okay? Go for it. Go for it. Beautiful. All right? It seems simple. Some people are gonna struggle with this. This is a really great cue that I don't have to like spend a bunch of time touching and moving and doing all this stuff. This works wonders. Wanna give her a go? All right, I'm gonna test you on the, because uh, first, all right, go ahead and go. Race, yep. Good. All right, notice we lock the, 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 lock the knees here, so we wanna give a little bit of movement everywhere. So just unhinge the knees, just a layer, another nap, the hinge was perfect, but we test, there it is, good. All right, go ahead and go. Notice the spine position stays exactly neutral. It doesn't break, it doesn't give. That's what we're looking. We're not talking about lifting with the back this way. We're talking about buffering the spine and then using the entire body to lift with. You notice as he did it, he didn't take a deep breath. If you were close, you felt though you could hear a little, little inhale, okay? That's gonna cause that diaphragm to descend. Fantastic job. Brady, do you wanna jump in and add anything? Maybe we could uh, uh, grab our new engineer, Victor, and put him through the paces. Because this morning we were talking about hitting new deadlift PRs. So this is the primary piece of deadlift. This is what we're talking Anybody see a functional deadlift here? Yeah. And how many do we got to do? A ton. Okay. We got to get prepared. Winter's coming. All right. You want to coach him, Brady? Yeah. So you covered everything really in depth. I don't have a whole lot to add, but to recap, we want to make sure we're stabilizing the spine so that that's not what's moving. We want to be moving at our hip joint. So first things first, I'm going to poke you. You can put your hands out front if you need or by your sides, whatever. So go ahead and push me away. Good. Keep your head nice and tall. Be upright through your spine and then go ahead and push back into your glutes and hamstrings. You're going to push that table back. And you don't need to squat quite as yep. much. Think about just continuing to okay. reach yep. back. Just reach it back. Over. Reach it back. There. And see if you can go quite a bit further. Yep. You can get yourself close to like 90 degrees. Don't work. Good. There we go. Nice. Everybody see that spine position as he does it? Perfectly nailed. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. This is nonsense that they teach us and hurt people that have real working jobs about this, this poor mechanics. Now, this stuff here is, I see you shaking your head. Nobody's going to do it because it doesn't really work very well. And the other thing they do is put a big belt on you and don't let you move. And then what happens? You don't learn how to do this stuff. And you take it off, and then you get hurt at home. 
It's a great way to move the healthcare costs off of the worker and onto you personally, okay? I wanna teach you guys how to do this stuff effectively for your job and for your life. So, uh, you guys got any questions? Anybody else wanna jump in and do a test, see how they're doing? Nothing? Dead silence this morning. Ah, uh, <laughs> you're volunteering your boss, I love it. <laughs> Good move. I like to play. I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> Good. Let's do it again. A little less squatting. Good. Everybody see that the back position as well? Get in great position. He's over. He's cueing because he's a uh, Bo's uh, pretty good at lifting weights. Uh, what's your deadlift, Bo? Uh, 655 is my best. Oh man, that's not 700. Got him it's coaching not... me right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're on our way. We're working on that. So, uh, so you see, he cued a pretty heavy brace, and that's what said. Careful with that in the working environment too. Balance it for the amount of load that you need to do because we still need to be able to move and other stuff. We don't want to lock down everything. So think about it as a dial. That's how we coach it as a, a continuum, okay? Um, if you're, you're also gonna get fatigued on the breathing side. It's respiration, okay? So it's a balance of both. What he's doing is fabulous. I'm not picking on, on Bo in that regard because he's going straight to exactly what he needs to do to deadlift 655 pounds. All right, that's pretty good, though. Huh? <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I appreciate everybody uh, jumping. Brady, did you have something to say? Yeah, I was just going to say that the important part and why we covered it first is you're not always going to be able to have perfect positions in the workplace. A deadlift is always going to be the same height off the ground directly in front of you, but in the real world, working in a job, you need to be able to just have that tension and then still be able to keep that as you move through these different positions that are sometimes a little bit awkward and not always perfect. So practicing and being good at getting that rigidity and breathing well is going to serve you well through an entire career and outside of the workplace as well. Hey, what's your deadlift, Brady? 727. Uh, hey, Kyle just joined us. What's your deadlift, Kyle? 661. <laughs> that is six pounds heavier than somebody else in this crowd. I love that. <laughs> That's a pretty robust uh, shipping staff, I must say. Uh, so anyway, I, I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, putting up with the little uh, show today, but it really is meant to, uh, this is stuff that needs to be taught appropriately in the workplace, and I'm passionate about it. So. Just trying to do this series, help you guys out, do teaching of our own people first. Uh, so uh, thank you.